So welcome to this webinar about the Presco range and the digestibility in a piglet. So thank you for joining us. Um, so this, uh, this webinar will be performed by uh, Chen Chin Jiang, the, uh, the technical support uh, in feed and pet food for Lima Green Gradient, and Sylvain Denis, uh, uh, research engineer in uh, Clermont-Ferrand Auvergne University. Uh, he performed the in vitro uh, 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 method uh, of comparison. So for practical use, uh, if you have any question, uh, please use uh, the, um, the question part in the right of the, your screen. Uh, ask the question and uh, at the end, the, the two speakers will reply you. So uh, to begin, uh, in few words, uh, let me introduce Limagrin Group. Uh, so Limagrin Group is an international uh, agricultural cooperative. That means that the owner of, uh, of this group uh, are farmers involved in uh, sustainable uh, agriculture. This group is of, a, of the main seed company in the world uh, and is very in interesting to to, to, to check that uh, more than 15% uh, of the, to the total turnovers is dedicated in uh, research and development. This huge investment uh, allowed to create each year a new variety uh, from, uh, from wheat, from maize, from tomato. Uh, and uh, this uh, huge group is composed by several business units involving in several and seeds uh, seeds uh, and vegetable seeds and also in uh, food and an ingredient uh, to make a focus in uh, lima grain ingredient lima grain ingredient is uh, the business unit involved in food pet food and animal uh, animal feed ingredient thanks to the seven uh, production sites uh, located in the netherlands and france we can proceed uh, more than uh, uh, 3 thousand 15 thousand tons of grain from uh, wheat from maize from barley and also from pulses uh, like pea uh, lentilles etc the ingredient produced each year are used today as a natural and clean label functional and nutritional solution so now uh, after this uh, quick uh, small uh, presentation uh, i let uh, speak uh, uh, chin chin john about the ingredient thank you Wada. thank you for the introduction uh, i am uh, chen chen uh, i am uh, uh, technical support by lima grain ingredients my background is uh, veterinary medicine and animal nutrition I help uh, uh, colleagues and clients to solve problems and challenges. So if you got uh, any questions during this presentation or any time after this presentation, uh, don't hesitate uh, to let me know. As you know already, the theme of this presentation is Presco pressure cooked ingredients to improve starch digestibility. Uh, this presentation consists of five parts. First of all, uh, I will talk about the uh, dietary components of cereal grains, then starch as energy source for piglets. Uh, on the third part, Presco puffing process will be introduced, followed by uh, evidence of Presco to improve starch digestibility. In the end, uh, a shorter summary. Okay, let's uh, get started. First of all, let's see uh, what are in the uh, grains. Uh, on the right side of this slide, you can see an unstained photo of barley on the top and uh, wheat on the bottom. From the uh, from uh, left to right, uh, they are endosperm, alluro layer, and uh, fruit coat. Endosperm includes mainly starch granules, which are stained in this photo in dark blue, as you can see. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, starch, namely amylose and uh, amylopectin. I will come back to that later in this uh, presentation. 
Then the Aloro layer, uh, we call this layer uh, brand after milling. And this is the most uh, nutritious part of uh, a cereal grain. Why? Because it consists of, uh, uh, it consists uh, proteins which are stained in the photo in a light grain, as well as uh, vitamins, tracely elements, and some uh, uh, fibers. That's why nutritionists uh, recommend us to eat uh, whole grain bread instead of a uh, white bread. Then the, the outmost layer is fruit coat. If you want to sound more technically, you can call, call it a pericarp. It consists of uh, um, uh, soluble and non-soluble fiber. The most uh, soluble fiber is on the, um, the interior side of this uh, uh, fruit coat. And the non-soluble fiber is uh, most, most of the time on the outside. Because uh, cereal grains are generally considered as energy source for piglets, so uh, in this presentation, I will focus mainly on starch. Now let's see uh, how is starch digested in a pig. The digestion of starch begins in the mouth when the feed is mixed with salivary amylase. However, this uh, digestion process is relatively short because when the feed is swallowed in the stomach, uh, the salivary amylase is deactivated by the low gastric pH. It's a different story for protease, which is uh, highly active in the stomach. And that's the reason we say a uh, higher retention time in the stomach improves uh, protein digestion. Now let's come back to starch. The majority of the, uh, the starch is digested by uh, pancreative and intestinal enzymes in the small intestine, uh, where they are broken down to uh, trisaccharides, uh, um, and disaccharides and trisaccharides, such as uh, maltose, maltotriose, and dextrins, which are further converted by and other enzymes um, to glucose to supply the pig with uh, energy. Although uh, enzymes uh, can complete, uh, can digest the starch completely, um, uh, however, the rate and extent of starch digestion in the small intestine varies. It depends on several factors. The first factor is the ability of an animal to produce uh, enzymes, aka the age of uh, animals. We know starch as well as crude fat are the main energy source for piglets. Just like we don't give uncooked cereals to our babies, piglets also need cooked cereals because they have an underdeveloped digestive system. However, the good news is that um, the morphological adaptations and the digestive capacity of a suckling pig goes through substantial changes with age. Of course, uh, provided uh, with a good uh, nutrition and care. However, um, although despite the increases of enzymes with age, uh, normally a pig, uh, a, a piglet has only reached its third, two thirds of its final digestive capacity when they are between three to four weeks old. And usually this is the moment uh, they are uh, getting weaned. So in order to improve uh, uh, their ability to uh, adapt to this weaning process, we need extra uh, measures to improve, uh, to stimulate the maturation of their intestinal, gastric intestinal tractor. Uh, for example, um, a, study a study showed that the starch in the diet upgrades the starch degradation enzymes in pigs when they, they were fed on higher starch diet, uh, resulted a higher uh, maltose and amylase activity in the uh, small intestine. 
Then, um, besides the animal factor, there are also other factors who deter, um, that determine starch digestibility. For example, <clears throat> botanical sources. We know uh, starch granules from different botanical sources come with different uh, sizes and uh, shapes. Uh, as you can see from the right of this uh, slide, the rice starch is much smaller than that of corn, pea, or uh, wheat, and they have different uh, shapes. And then the nature of the crist crystallinity of the starch granules. What does that mean? It means uh, how compact the uh, starch granules are. So um, if it's more compact, uh, it's more difficult uh, to be digested. Then the third is the, the ratio of amylose and amylopectin. Uh, we know uh, amylose and amylopectin, uh, they have different uh, chains. The amylose has a linear chain. On the contrary, amylopectin has uh, uh, branched chains. So when uh, uh, in nature, the most uh, grains, they uh, consist of 20% uh, uh, amylose and 80%, roughly 80% amylopectin. You know, it's really amazing. The nature also follows the 2080 rule. So when a grain consists of almost 100% of amylopectin, uh, we call it uh, waxy uh, variety. For example, sticky rice is a, a waxy variety and it's more, digest, uh, more easily to be digested. And uh, uh, then it's the presence of pores of uh, starch granules. Uh, some starch granules naturally they have pores, and some by yeah by processing or by enzyme uh, um, by enzymes. Lastly, the type and extent of um, processing uh, of this uh, starch. Then I will talk about uh, the puffing process, uh, Presco. We use uh, Presco to puff uh, the grains. Uh, as you can see from this uh, uh, illustration on the left side of this slide, um, Presco stands for pressure cooking. It's a unique uh, puffing process based on calculated, uh, uh, calculated combination of pressure, steam, and time. It goes like this. Uh, the, the clean grain go to this puffer with high pressure from 20 to 25 bars. And with uh, a high uh, overheated steam, the temperature uh, of this steam is uh, uh, from uh, 250 to 300 Celsius degree. And the grain stay there in the puffer for a few seconds. Then the pressure is uh, reduced abruptly. Then the grain are shot to, to the tunnel. Then they pop. Why? Uh, because the water in the starch granules evaporates. Uh, thus, the structure, uh, crystalline structure of the starch uh, granules um, are swollen instantly. We know one more water in steam occupies much more space than uh, in li uh, liquid form. So when the, uh, when the steam evaporates, it digs holes in the starch granules. And that's the process of starch, uh, starch gelatinization. Then afterwards, the, mm, the grain, the, uh, the puffed grains will be cooled instantly. Because of this instant cooling, there's no starch retrogradation takes place. You know, uh, starch retrogradation makes it uh, indigestible. Then the, the puffed grains will be uh, processed further into final products. With the manipulation of uh, pressure, starch, and the time, uh, we can guarantee optimal starch gelatinization, batch to batch consistency. And of course, the shelf life is improved, for example, by, by reduced microbial loads. Then let's see um, what's uh, inside, uh, what, what does the internal structure of a native grain and a puffed grain, presco puffed grain look, uh, look like. As you can see on the uh, left side, they are native wheat and native barley. 
uh, they more or less have the same uh, structure. The the run run the bodies are starch uh, for native wheat, and it's embedded with uh, uh, some uh, other uh, components, for example, protein, fiber, and other elements. And it's the same for barley on the bottom. However, yeah, the starch granules are more oval shaped for barley. Then we move to the right side. You can see this uh, uh, structure, uh, internal structure of uh, um, grains is completely uh, open up. And you cannot see any intact uh, stretch granules anymore, uh, which makes it more available to animals, to the uh, digestive enzymes. Then besides the whole grain internal structure, we also uh, made some photos uh, last year with the milled version. This is on the, on the left side, you can say native wheat and native corn. Um, uh, for wheat, uh, the starch granules are more round and for wheat on the, uh, for corn on the bottom, you can see um, there, there are many uh, intact uh, uh, starch granules. Then we move on the on the right. After uh, Presco, uh, we cannot see any intact uh, granules anymore, and the internal structure is more porous, and that means the uh, nutrients are more available to animals. Then let's see the sec uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, we also did some uh, uh, test uh, trials to see. Um, uh, uh, how uh, these grains uh, uh, behave and the different uh, circumstances, uh, different uh, processing technology. Like this one, uh, we did uh, with the uh, Schottos feed research in 2008. As we can see here, a uh, Presco uh, processed maize has the highest uh, viscosity compared to untreated uh, uh, maize, macronized, uh, steam flakes, or expanded maize, uh, which can mm, be translated, as I said previously, longer retention time in the stomach, more time for enzymes to digest uh, uh, protein. Because we did uh, that trial in yeah, more than 10 years ago, in order to validate it again, uh, we did uh, another one with this hot host fit research last year. And this uh, viscosity test, we mimicked the uh, intestinal environment and the proximal part of in small intestine of a pig. As we can see here the, on the graph, baby, uh, baby uh, barley, which is indicated by the uh, pink line, it has the highest uh, viscosity. And the second uh, uh, dark red line uh, represented for uh, extruded barley. So um, baby baby barley uh, has better better digest uh, better viscosity in the stomach compared to uh, extruded barley. However, when it gets to the small intestine, the viscosity drops. But for extruded barley, it's still uh, kind of viscous. And it's the same for um, high energy, which is the combination of uh, barley, baby barley and baby corn. And when it compared to a uh, mixed, uh, mix, expanded uh, uh, grain mixtures, it also has higher viscosity. We know, uh, yeah, longer retention time in the stomach, uh, better for protein digestion. However, when it's in the small intestine, we don't want to have any um, viscosity because if, um, if it's still uh, the the feed is still viscous in the uh, small intestine. It might cause uh, diarrhea. Then this side we also did uh, yeah we did it uh, more than ten years ago with this whole toast feed research. This one is uh, uh, we compared untreated grains uh, versus uh, presco grains um, in uh, ileo in vitro digestibility of uh, organic matter and starch. And the uh, the graph on the top is for Presco uh, maize and untreated maize. The bottom is for um, wheat. As we can see here, the yellow bars uh, represent for uh, ileo in vitro digestibility organic matter, and the orange bars are the are for starch. As we can see, for the both um, uh, grain types. 
a press called gelatinized maize and wheat uh, has both a higher uh, in vitro uh, ileo digestibility of both organic matter and uh, starch. Like here, you can see this uh, uh, patent uh, logo because at that moment, the uh, Presco process was still patented. And this ileo, uh, higher ileo digestibility can be translated to um, uh, uh, better feed conversion and better uh, animal uh, growth performance. Then we did uh, another uh, trial with the uh, hot toast. Uh, we want to see the ileo in vitro digestibility of uh, organic matter and starch of uh, um, of wheat in uh, in relation to different gelatinization technology, and we did the for untreated wheat uh, and micronized uh, uh, steam flaked, as well as uh, ex expanded uh, wheat. So in the end, so we yeah we see the same uh, same story, uh, the ileo in vitro digest digestibility of both organic matter and uh, starch um, uh, are both uh, uh, the highest for presco gelatinized uh, wheat. Then in order, yeah, because we did that uh, uh, trial uh, many years ago, we want to again validate this trial. Then we did uh, uh, another um, uh, another in, vi in vitro test with the uh, uh, Clermont Auvergne University. And we simulated uh, the proximal part of the digest uh, digestive tract of wind piglets. And there, are, uh, there were three uh, treatments, uh, BA01, 02, 03. Uh, they are presco barley, extruded barley, expanded barley, mm, respectively. Because this uh, team analyzed, it's uh, uh, really complicated. It's yeah. Mm, I heard it's the best way to simul simulate uh, the digestive uh, tract of uh, uh, humans, of animal or animals. Uh, I don't know much about it. I will give the floor to uh, Dr. Dini to explain the principles. Dr. Dini, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Chinshin. Good afternoon to all participants. First of all, I thank Walter and Chin Chin for inviting me to this uh, webinar and giving me the opportunity to present my activity. I am a research engineer at the Clermont Auvergne University in Clermont-Ferrand in the center of France. I work in a team called MEDIS for microbiology, digestive environment and health, which associates uh, researchers from the university and from the INRAE Institute. The activities of MEDIS are focused on the study of the human animal microbiota in relation with foods, environment, host, in particular in the biosphere of the gut. We uh, thus uh, study the behavior on impact of food, pollutants, uh, drugs, uh, beneficial and pathogenic bacteria, uh, in particular E. coli, uh, that cause diarrhea and or inflammation. And uh, their interaction with the host microbiota and intestinal membrane. We study all of this in healthy conditions uh, and patholo pathological uh, situations like uh, IBD or IBS, but also uh, in extra digestive pathologies like obesity. Uh, in this context, uh, our team has a career and developed since more than 20 years a large panel of in vitro, ex vivo, and in vivo tools. Uh, divided into four platforms. Uh, the configuration is unique in France and almost rare in uh, Europe. Um, now I'm mainly involved in one of those platforms called Digestive or Digest IV for in vitro, uh, which gather dynamics in vitro systems 
that simulates the digestive environment, mainly the upper tract, stomach and small intestine, and the colon. Uh, this platform is supported by a UCR partner, uh, like many platforms of the university. Professor Monica Rick is the director of digestive of, um, uh, of the platform, uh, dig digest uh, IV. And uh, I am the operational manager. Uh, we propose our expertise to the academic and industrial scientific uh, communities uh, in the field of in vitro digestion using uh, pertinent systems for the screening and the development of new products, formulations or concepts uh, in the field of food and feed industries, nutrition, pharmacy, microbiology, toxicology, biotechnology and health in general. That's probably why Limagra ingredients ask us to study the behavior of their product, in particular, its intestinal digestibility in piglets. Excuse me, I, I forget to uh, pass this uh, slide. To study the impacts of different technological processing on start digestibility of barley, uh, we use the dynamic in vitro systems called Time One, Team One, which is actually the most complete and the most uh, documented system to simulate the digestive process of uh, nano uh, monogastrics. Excuse me. These systems, uh, developed by Mans Minicus at the TNO Institute in Zeist, the Netherlands, is composed of four successive compartments, the stomach, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Each compartment is formed by two glass modules with a flexible wall inside. The system is kept at a constant temperature by pumping water into the space between the glass jacket and the flexible walls. Peristaltic movements are simulated by alternative compression and relaxation of the flexible walls following changes in the water pressure. Series of peristaltic valves uh, isolate each compartment and allows luminal content to transit from one to the following compartment in function of the transit conditions programmed in the system. Gastric and ileal deliveries follow a mathematical function established by Elashov and collaborators. Changing only two parameters of the mathematical function allows simulating a large range of profiles indeed a large range of digestion situations. Different sensors and probes are connected to each compartment to control volumes, temperature, and pH. The gastric acidification profile is also controlled by the system and can be modified according to simulated situation. pH setup are different for the three parts of the small intestine. pH are adjusted using hydrochloric acid in the stomach and sodium bicarbonate in the small intestine. The main digestive secretions are introduced during time into the stomach and the duodenum. Therefore, pepsin and lipase are secreted into the stomach, whereas bile and pancreatin which is a pancreatic extract containing all the pancreatic enzyme like amylase, are delivered into the duodenum. Here again, quantities of enzymes are adjusted, adapted to digestive conditions. For example, we introduced higher amounts of enzyme when we want to simulate the digestion of a complete meal compared to a glass of water. Finally, the Team 1 includes an original and almost unique system 
that continuously eliminates from jejunal and ileal contents excess water brought by secretions and digestive compounds resulting from hydrolysis of macronutrients. In the same way, any small compounds like drugs or xenobiotics can be eliminated by the dialysis system implemented in both final compartments of the team one. Dialysates are generally collated for analysis. Moreover, hilial effluents, uh, which normally enter the colon and contains all the um, uh, elements that have not been uh, digested, uh, they are collected during digestion. Thus, we are able to establish the balance of the digestion of many compounds. Sampling at all stages and during time allows establishing kinetics of hydrolysis of macronutrients or kinetics of liberations of formulated compounds. In conclusion, the team system is a powerful to tool to evaluate the digestibility and the behavior of products in the upper digestive tract. Of course, it presents some limitations uh, as all in vitro technologies. Among them, one example is the absence of a true intestinal membrane uh, with all the enzymes associated and active absorption phenomena. Another parameter to, con to be considered is the necessity to get uh, sufficient uh, configurable in vivo data uh, of the model you want to mimic. Of course, it is always possible to conduct in vivo experiments to implement the model, but those ones are often expensive and nowadays more and more restricted, particularly in Europe where the three air rule uh, reduce, uh, uh, reuse, or recycle uh, prevails uh, increasingly. For the present study, I realized a review of the uh, studies conducted on piglets. I read around 80 documents and retained more or less 50. But in fact, few correspond exactly to the model we wanted to simulate. And it's uh, uh, unfortunately uh, generally the case for uh, many models we want to simulate. We targeted the healthy wind, uh, wind piglets around two weeks after winning when transient disturbance of digestion resulting from winning was passed. Some of the main phys physiological char characteristics are presented here. Gastric emptying is slowed down compared to suckling piglets, in particular uh, those who do not receive solid feed with milk. Half emptying times is around uh, 260 minutes. Acidification of the gastric content is also slow, which impacts protein breakdown, as um, said uh, before me, uh, Chin Chin, but also gives the opportunity to salivary amylase to start the hydrolysis of starch. All main digestive enzymes are present and active, uh, even if they are uh, not in the uh, final hormone we can get in uh, growing pigs or mature pigs. We found some data on pancreatic amylase secretion in, in piglets and defined the hormone to be delivered into the duodenum of the team system. Uh, global evaluations of ileal digestibility of starch uh, generally demonstrate uh, that starch is highly digestible uh, in young uh, wind piglets, as for uh, growing pigs and mature pigs. Uh, finally, other parameters such as intestinal pH uh, uh, were also implemented to the system. 
two of the three projects uh, we studied were grounded, the Presco and extruded barley, and only particles less than two millimeters were used uh, in the experiments. In fact, uh, our system is not really able to manage uh, uh, quite large particles. Products uh, uh, were digested two times and some amounts of products were introduced into the stomach. Digestions were conducted during six hours, uh, which is something to uh, keep in mind because it's not the uh, entire time for uh, entire digestions of the product. Samples were regularly collected to finally evaluate star digestibility and kinetics of hydrolysis of the three products. And now I will turn it back uh, over to uh, Chin Chin, who will expose the conclusion of uh, this study. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Dini, for the nice uh, uh, explanation. I hope uh, everyone gets it. So now I'm glad to uh, present you the result. I uh, escaped to the uh, kinetics part because it's quite uh, complex. I just showed the um, end results. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, so uh, as uh, Dr. Dini said, we uh, simulated uh, the uh, digestion of uh, uh, starch in the wind piglets for only six hours. Um, then, uh, as you can see on the uh, graph, the uh, Presco baby barley, the BA01, the first one in dark red, has the highest starch digestibility, um, namely 70%, 70, 70 followed by extruded barley, uh, BA02, uh, 65%, then the expanded barley, uh, BA03, uh, 61%, uh, which means uh, the pre presco gelatinized uh, uh, barley is more available for animals and it's uh, uh, digested also easily. So besides, uh, in addition to uh, all, all of that uh, um, in vivo, in vitro tests, we also did a in vivo uh, trial with uh, feed innovation research in Wageningen in to, uh, 2016. And the purpose of this experiment was to compare the effects of Presco barley, Presco baby corn with a competitor gelatinized corn products on the performance of wind piglets. There were in total uh, almost 200 piglets uh, wind around uh, 25 days. And they, they are two uh, treatments. Every treatment we... Uh, Sorry, I forgot to mention uh, the whole uh, trial was divided into two phases. The first phase is the uh, pre-start phase from day one to day uh, 25, uh, no, not 25, uh, day 15. And the second phase is the start phase, day uh, 15 to day uh, 29, the end of this experiment. <clears throat> the trials, uh, the the diets are uh, we include included uh, fifty percent of uh, uh, baby corn and um, for a diet and another uh, diet uh, we include for another diet we included the competitor corn fifty percent. Then the piglets were divided uh, uh, randomly into groups based on sex, offspring, and their birth weight. And di the diets were given as pellet, and the piglets were fed at lip. Now let's see the results. These are the results. And uh, on the left side of the graph, you can see that's the body weight. Uh, the the baby corn uh, group, the uh, Presco group uh, is um, <coughs> indicated. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> in dark red and the competitor group uh, is uh, the orange one. As we can see, the uh, Presco group mm, had a lower, slightly lower initial body weight. Uh, on, 10, uh, on day 15, uh, the Presco uh, group uh, still had a slightly lower body weight than the competitor 
competitor group. However, when it's on day 29, the end of this uh, uh, trial, uh, five days after winning, uh, the body weight, uh, uh, the body weight of the um, Presco group uh, exceeded that of the competitor group. As for feed intake, um, from uh, uh, day one to the end of this uh, trial, uh, the the feed, the average daily feed intake uh, was uh, higher for Presco group than for the competitor coin group. Uh, which means, although baby a group, a corn group has uh, had lower initial body weight, it has a higher end weight, and um, uh, Presco baby corn is also uh, highly palatable for animals, so they eat more. They like it, then eat, they eat more. That's the reason they got a higher end body weight. Yes. Then a little summary, a small summary of uh, these, uh, these trials. We know Presco uh, process gelatinized starch to supply easy, uh, easily digestible energy for young piglets. And the young piglets uh, li uh, like uh, uh, the taste, the smell of uh, um, Presco processed cereals, which can be translated to um, uh, a smoother, winning transition and the better technical performances. As for the uh, applications, because yeah, young piglets, they, they have uh, underdeveloped uh, digestive system. Uh, they need a pre gelatinized uh, <clears throat> starch uh, in their um, dry, uh, dry semi-moist uh, crib feed or winner diets or some concentrations for piglets. Uh, because of this uh, uh, gelatinized, uh, Presco gelatinized uh, uh, starch, they have a higher feed intake. Uh, um, because of the high viscosity in the stomach, it's, uh, uh, it improves uh, the protein digestibility. And uh, uh, based on the trials we have done, uh, it has higher digestibility, And that means a smooth uh, transition from uh, milk to solid feed because they are used to eat uh, mm, Mm, uh, grains before winning. And uh, in the end, uh, you have uh, excellent uh, uh, piglet health and performances. Uh, and we have been cooperated with uh, <clears throat> many feed manufacturers for many years, for decades. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chen Chin. Thank you, Sylvain. So, do not hesitate to ask question in the in the right part of the screen. Uh, we have uh, several questions. Uh, first one, uh, I think, is for <coughs> for Sylvain. Uh, you make a focus on the upper um, uh, digestive tract, uh, stomach and intestinal. Uh, do you do you explore uh, <laughs> The, the last part of uh, intestine, like uh, colon, and the fermentation uh, in this part, for uh, over uh, over application, of course. Yeah, yeah. We we actually develop um, a model of a colonic uh, a colonic model for pigs. Uh, actually, we develop uh, for mature pigs. Um, uh, of weight uh, more than 100 uh, kilograms. But uh, uh, just uh, one, two years ago, we also developed uh, a model uh, for just win winning piglets. And uh, for this study, we, uh, we, there is an article, uh, I think, uh, two, two, uh, two articles and uh, a thesis uh, have been done, done on this subject and uh, to, to focus on the, how the microbiota react uh, during winning. And uh, actually, it's for an industrial, we develop a, a colonic model for mature pigs. Thank you. 
A question for Chen Chin. Uh, so you well explain uh, what is it the Presco ingredient, um, but uh, what has uh, what are the, the main difference between expanded and uh, extruded ingredient? Yeah, I'm not an expert on the technology. As far as I understand, uh, they have the same uh, uh, components. Uh, however, for extrusion, it's more intensive. Uh, more shear, higher temperature. And uh, of course, that means uh, more expensive. Thank you. Uh, another question for Sylvain. Uh, so we make a focus on the starch digestibility, but um, uh, do you know the impact of uh, fibers on uh, starch digestibility in the literature or, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know a little bit more on human than on pigs, of course, uh, but uh, generally, the, the, as I already say, the change during his presentations, uh, the presence of fiber, but uh, it depends on the nature of the fiber, of course, but the presence of soluble fibers uh, 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 um, uh, ah. um, have a, a, a viscosity uh, um, um, uh, effect uh, on the shine, on the intestinal content, especially uh, in the in, in the gastric part, but uh, for humans also uh, in the small intestine, and uh, uh, of course it, it can reduce uh, the gastric emptying. Uh, in some cases, it, it accelerates right the uh, small intestine transit. Uh, some uh, some uh, uh, investigators have found that uh, the presence of uh, some fibers can uh, uh, limit the absorption of small molecules, and for example, uh, for uh, glucose. And uh, it also sometimes acts as a competitor for amylase. So, uh, it can modulate uh, the uh, uh, glycemic uh, index uh, uh, during digestion. And um, probably it's not uh, uh, really the, the, the effect we, uh, we expect for, for pigs, <laughs> but for humans, uh, it's quite uh, important. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we will conclude this uh, webinar uh, about the, the piglet digestibility with Presco ingredients. So um, all the participants will receive a video and the presentation in uh, um, very soonly. And uh, of course, the, the speaker, Chin Chin and Sylvain, are available to, to ask, ask you directly. So thank you very much. Uh, have a, a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all. Bye.